This video is going to be all about installing permanent power from the temporary power pole to the house. Uh, as you can see behind me, my brother is down in the hole. And when we installed temporary power, one of the things we did not get on film was covering up the hole. And when we did that, we coiled up all the extra cable that gets us from the temporary pole here to the house there with a piece of plywood. And we dug down with the backhoe to the top of the plywood. And if we're real careful, you can go slow and you can, you can see him down there shoveling the rest of the dirt off of the plywood. And he should be able to grab the corner and pull up the edge and get the plywood out of there and that'll expose the wire and that'll allow me to keep digging with the backhoe once we get the wire out of the way. Just a little, pers little safety thing to make sure we don't hit the wire while we're digging. And it also prevents us that? from... We don't want to hit the wire? Don't worry about why we don't want to hit the wire. It's not important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's pulling. His pants up first. Nope. I have more to dig around the edges. Show me where. Show me what the problem is. It's literally all the way up here. here. A big old chunk of freaking dirt right here. You just said what's and you can't lift it up? Do you need me to get in the hole? Oh, here's a shovel. Here I'll, you go. I'll just break it. Show out. me how you do it Dan's way. Here you go. <laughs> here. Here. I'll just Let me you put you guys down so I, can, so I can go do this. Let's back out just to prove a point. I'm taking my shovel with me. Me go do, do it my way. My way is the right way. You need to dig some more. What are you doing? Oh Why man, you that's weird. All dirt left there. Huh? You need to keep digging. Mm. Here, I'm gonna get on the tractor and dig some off that corner for you. got the piece of plywood off the top and when he when we dug this trench from the meter up at the house we ran it down through the trench we got it down here put the temporary power pole in we're going to kind of leave it the way it is until we're actually in a couple days from now when we actually are able to hook up the power to the house um, we wanted to get the trench dug so that the LNI inspector when he comes to inspect the house can inspect our trench and see that we're ready to just basically pull a couple of cinder blocks out disconnect from the temporary power pole and run this cable down to the house. Um, it's pretty straightforward. This is a triplex with an extra ground cable because it's a it's a permanent remote meter versus a permanent meter on the side of his house. So we're just gonna leave it the way it is and then we'll move out this little bit of dirt here and spool this down the line and backfill over this big old hole and this will all be his driveway eventually. So this is how we how we do the temporary power though, right? We coil up all this extra cable. We use the permanent installed cable as the power to the temporary power pole during the build and then we uncoil this and hook it up to the house and that's our permanent power. So I guess we're going to track with tonight and get up tonight. So we have completed the trench over to the house. Um, got all this extra coil, cable coiled up in the ground. And I took off all the miscellaneous stuff off the power pole here. Uh, Chris is going to walk up to the meter, which is out by the road on a pump house. And he's going to go ahead and turn off the main power, which will kill the power to this thing. And once he does that, we will disconnect the main lines from the inside of this panel. Then drag this coil up through that trench, push it in through the conduit into the house, and plug it in. The power that we need to shut off is inside of this meter box right here. And this is the outside of his well pump house. And there's his well. And his house is down through the trees. So he's gonna come out here and he's gonna open up this panel. And he's gonna shut the main power off. This panel is specifically designed to do what we're doing to it. It has a 200 amp cutout breaker inside of it 
that feeds power down to the house. Um, these are special order. You can pick them up on uh, from Home Depot. Special order. This one happens to be a GE. So he just turned off all of the power, which he didn't need to, but he turned off this breaker right here is the main 200 amp breaker that feeds the house. So there's power to the meter from the road, but now there's no power down to the house. So we're gonna go back down there and disconnect the main lugs out of the temporary power pole, which happens to be the same temporary power pole I used to build my house. You can check out some of those videos. Um, my septic system install and gutter piping around my foundation. But the temporary power pole is down here. So we're opening up the panel. Careful. He's got a little electrical tester there, which he lost my clip on already. That's unbelievable. I didn't lose the clip on us. <laughs> well, it was there. <laughs> I just pulled it out of there. How could I possibly have lost your clip? So. This would be screaming at you. That's what I did. Everything's dead. I just did that. Uh -huh. Give me this. I gotta go find the clip. Undo these. This one. This one. And this one. And uh, and this one. That one down there too. Got all the zip ties on the big wires, not the small stuff. You got a lot of stuff in your big old garage right now? Yes, and no. No, you do not. What? No is the answer. So do you know what I'm asking? Do you, can I store stuff in your garage? The answer is no. Just one thing? No. Yeah. One thing? No, I didn't build a garage for you. I built a garage for me. I'm going to use all my other crap. I, mean, I want to hear that. So as you can see, we've disconnected the main power lines and this extra ground, which is required when you do a remote meter or a Basically, the house is remote also. We also disconnected the ground cable. So this is just loose in the ground. We're gonna push it over and uh, should expose it into the cable and we should be good to go. And we are ready to pull the cable, which is terribly not much fun. That's not much fun. All right, I'm gonna put the ground cable in. This one. Okay, so that is the power supply. Got this cardboard and take it back to the pile. Okay. Okay. So we just completed, uh, we put the screws back in, we got this thing all buttoned up. So we'll, this will stay open until the L&I inspection happens and then we'll backfill. So we're gonna go into that garage right now and go ahead and start working on the uh, panel on the inside. So as you saw, we pushed the cables through the wall and they come out of the bottom of the panel here. Um, the two bigger ones are the hot lines. They don't, they're just black. And then you have one with the yellow stripe, which is your neutral. And then we have, in our case, a ground line because this is a remote panel. So I'm going to only go ahead and route one of these and then I will finish up the other three and I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like when I'm all done. So this is aluminum wire and it requires that you use a anti-corrosive compound. Um, this stuff I pick up down at Home Depot or Lowe's, it's OxGuard. Uh, antioxidant compound made by Gardner Bender. Uh, it's this black goop. And I put a pretty liberal amount on, right? I get down inside of the lug pretty good. Make sure we don't have any issues there. 
I also put some on the end of the wire um, to make sure that you get a good coating all the way around. You don't want oxidation forming like you see on a car battery sometimes. You don't want to over tighten these, but you definitely want to make sure they're really on there so you don't have any issues with your cable slipping back out again later. So that thing is in there good. Um, I also take a little bit more of this stuff and goop it on around the terminal up here if there's any little bit of wire sticking out. Uh, just prevents any oxide from building up on the aluminum wire. So that's it. So that's the first one. We'll get that pushed back in there, groomed in there real nice. I'm gonna go ahead and route the other three and I'll bring you back and show you what that looks like. So because this is a remote panel, what he just installed, can you point at that? That little ground lug right there is a addition you have to add in order to ground the meter panel to this remote panel. And that little ground lug is, in this case, a square D ground lug because it's a larger size. Um, they're common at all sorts of hardware stores, Home Depot, Lowe's has them, any common electrical store will have those. So you have to add one of those to the grounding bus in order to install the grounding cable to the panel. So we just turn the power on to the panel. So main breaker is on. This breaker is for the plugs in the kitchen. So that works. I just saw it light up. In fact, we can test it. Ground fault arc. So that's good. And we'll test that one. And it should go off. There it goes. So that supplies power to the other plug-in upstairs. Uh, you can see the main wires come in through here are routed up and around and plugged into the main lugs and the neutral on the ground. That's what it should kind of look like when you're done. That's how we hook up power. This all has to be inspected by L&I. The permit is hanging over here. So they're gonna come back and inspect this hookup. They'll inspect the box on the outside of the house. They'll inspect the trench. They'll sign that off. Then we'll cover this all up. And then we're done with electrical.